Oh, mind, it's lovely here, Dave, in Thailand, isn't it? The place where us Brits have come to know and love for a bit of quality R&R. &R. Nah, we came here tasting the great food, and that's how we developed our palate, the love the Thai flavours that we adore at home. We've got a taste for the coconut and the spicy curry and the old exotic fruits, haven't we? Oh, aye, but there's more to exotic fruit than just pineapple. I mean, we've got custard apples, durian, mangosteen, pawpaw, rambutan, to name but a few. Fancy a paw pie ped? No. That's baked Tiger King prawns, red curry and crab sauce with green veg. Will you shut up? Thailand has a wildly varying landscape and a rich multicultural past. Its place on the ancient spice routes between East and West brought traders and ingredients from all over the world to its shores. The result, one of the most varied cuisines on the planet, and we can't wait to try as much of it as possible. We're starting in Phuket, the largest of all the islands in the south. It used to be the perfect stopover for traders sheltering from the monsoons. This coastline would have been the first to see the spices and produce from places like Persia, India and, of course, Europe. It's a melting pot that's typical of Thai cuisine. The reoccurring theme of adopting and adapting over the years is what has given us the flavours of Thailand that we've known to come and love at home. You're absolutely right. Today, Phuket is the destination of choice for many of the 22 million visitors who come to Thailand every year. We're catching up with one person who remembers it like it was. He's Mom Tree, a food lover and architect who built some of the first hotels here. Mom Tree, good Hello. morning. I'm Sai. Very nice to meet you, sir. How are you this morning? Nice to meet you. Well, what a great day for a walk on the beach. Well, you live in Bangkok most of the time, or? I live in Bangkok, in Chiang Mai, in Phuket, and in Maine, USA. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> nice <laughs> life. <laughs> what was it like, Montreux, when you first arrived? Because you're responsible for bringing tourism to Phuket, aren't you? Really? Yes. Yeah. And um, maybe ruining it, too, from, uh, from my point of view. From your point of view, OK. <laughs> because when I arrived here 40 years ago, there was absolutely nothing. Wow. Nothing except for naked, beautiful, young hippies. The hippies always discover the best places in the world first. Yeah. I bet, though, in the village, there's still some casualties there. I bet there's still some of those original hippies. Or is it just you? They all have gotten very rich and <laughs> fly <laughs> private jets now. <laughs> really? <laughs> there's nothing like a hippie that's got rich. <laughs> There are restaurants and hotels catering to all tastes in Phuket, but we're after the real deal. So who better to serve us up an authentic Southern Thai breakfast than our new foodie friend, Mom Tree? This is a very grand breakfast. It is a very grand breakfast, isn't it? Well, it's common breakfast, but it's set very grandly. It's More the curry less. that is the main part. Wow. Curry. Good grief. Crumbs. <laughs> I feel like the King of Siam at the moment. I'll just see with this, you it's know. It's beautiful. Yes. Is, is this what people would have and eat for breakfast in Phuket? Yeah, at the home they're probably simpler, but people would choose one or two or three curries. So there's eight curries here? Yeah, each one of them you'll find it's quite different taste. This one is made from shrimp paste. That's beef curry and that's chicken curry. This is simply Thai food. We wouldn't get it home. And it's a sweet one with some nuts. I think there's maybe some tamarind in there as well. The spiced tamarind is originally from Goa in India. You can taste straight away how the spice trade has influenced the food here. In the old days, it used to be all very hot. These days, because of many Bangkok and tourists comes to Thailand, I've noticed that the, the degree of hotness has been reduced by a bit. But yeah. in the old days, I couldn't eat this. Too, 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 too hot. potent. The fresh pineapple I use as a fire extinguisher if it gets too hot. <laughs> this is amazing food. It's amazing. Well, they all balance yeah. together really nicely. Yeah. You know, one flavour complements another. It's the most exciting gastronomic experience I think I've yeah. ever had because you build all sorts of little flavours mm. to your own palate. Mm. It's also representative of how food obsessed the Thai people are. Mm. Look at this for breakfast. And that's the mad thing. All this is normal food. 
Not it's just like everyday food. Everyday food in mm. a grand setting. Bacon and egg. This is the bacon and egg. <laughs> yeah, the bacon and the bacon and eggs of Thailand. <laughs> you know, Sai, I love the fact that the spices in each curry are like a little taste of Thailand's history. Now enough of this blathering, Dave. I'm roasting. So let's get in the pool and work out what we're gonna cook. We should cook a tribute to Montree. I mean, he's really inspiring. Squid. squid! Let's do squid. Let's do the best salad you've ever tasted. Right. Montree style. Right. Oh, look at this, Kingy. It's a piece of paradise. Isn't, isn't it? it just, dude? Isn't it just? Look at it. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know, so much so that in 2005, Fortune magazine declared Phuket to be amongst the top five retirement destinations in the world. What a place to come and pop your clogs. A place to grow crumbly. Right. We start off by making the dressing. Don't forget Thai cuisine, pestle and mortar is king. That comes before the knife. Thailand has about 80 different types of chilli, and the hottest is here in the south, the bird's eye chilli. Southern Thais love their food hot. You start your salad dressing by crushing up some of these. Do your worst, Hercules. Just leave the seeds in, don't worry about that. We want heat, we want fire, we want passion. Add a clove of garlic. The squid part of the salad's hot. We throw the dressing in the hot part, mix that with the cold part. And actually, you've got kind of hot and cold as well in this salad, as well as the four elements of Thai cookery, which are salt and sweet, hot and sour. The chilies are the hot part. Now add a dollop of palm sugar to give a little sweetness, not to mention a luscious caramel flavour. Add some Thai fish sauce, the most important flavouring in Thai cooking, and used in nearly every dish. That's the salty. Take a lime, roll it, you get more juice out of it that way. And there's some sour, and that's the dressing done. These are beautiful baby squid, and this is how you get them from the fishmonger. What you do is take the squid and kind of you've got its head, its tentacles, the guts and the, the bit you want to eat the tube. So just kind of pull that out. I want to cut the tentacles off below the head and we discard the head. So that's the bad bits. Now in here you'll find a quill. Extraordinary, it's quite beautiful in a way. It really looks like plastic. Obviously you can't eat that. Discard. Now I'm going to cut it into two. Trim the bottom off. I scrape the inside and I want to peel the skin and the fins off. And a lot of the time you have squid, it's rubbery. It's because people don't bother to peel it. You need to take that membrane off and just score it like a diamond, but don't cut all the way through. But when you cook it, you get those lovely kind of curly shapes that you get in Thai restaurants. And you just keep on till you've got a nice bowl of meat. Now for the salad. Slice up a bunch of garlic chives. They're more garlicky and less oniony than normal chives, you see, unsurprisingly. As well as some sweet basil. It has a beautiful aniseedy flavour. Tear up a handful of that along with some mint. Now you see, a lemon zester will give a little bit of Thai class to your chopped cucumber. Half some plum tomatoes, then chuck them into the salad along with some sliced garlic, shallots and spring onions. Right, we're ready to cook the squid, along with some ginger to give it a delicious kick. Boom! Now that's how hot you want your wok. Look at that, lovely. Oh, what great. Oh, the smell, man, the smell. Oh, now, the squid goes in. If you work it a little bit, and then the tubes will start to curl up. Oh, look at that, mate. You know, oh, you might look at it, you might think, those two lads, they've got some job, haven't they? <laughs> You're not wrong. We're there, aren't we? Yeah. Beautiful. Take it off the heat, and then we put in the dressing. Oh, look at the colour of that, mate. We're just going to dress this with a little drizzle of toasted sesame oil for flavour. Lush. Get a little spoon at my old mucker. Right. And we just put that in. But what a salad dressing. Just turn it in gently. 
and the leaves are yielding just a little bit with the heat, but not too much. Wow, mate. Beautiful. Yeah, the whole thing now is about room temperature. Well, about 36 degrees. Cold beers. Definitely. Sit, chat, nibble on, as they would in Thailand. Who said salads were boring? You know, there are 562 islands dotted around the southern Thailand. Oh, someone's been reading his guidebook. We're heading off the beaten track to the tiny island of Koh Yanoi. But we've heard on the grapevine that is the place to find really authentic southern food. Koh Yanoi is just a 30-minute hop from Phuket. I feel just like Roger Moore Kingy. These islands were where they filmed the man with the golden gun. And it's where Danny Boyle filmed the beach dude. I could be Leonardo DiCaprio. Ooh. Yeah, but I bet Leo and Rog didn't tip up in the rainy season. Kingy, looks as like the monsoon's caught up with us at last. Trust us, trust Aye. us. Never mind. Got a change of shirt, would be right. You know, Dave, southern Thailand has only two seasons, the dry season and the green season, so-called for very good reason. It chucks it down between May and October, giving the plants a window to grow. Koh Yanoi is 18 miles around the circumference. That's not a big island. It's a small little pinprick in the sea. It's a proper island in paradise. Most people here on Koh Yanoi make their living from the island's natural resources. Some work in the rubber plantations. Thailand's the biggest producer of natural rubber in the world. And with so much coastline, many earn their living from the sea. Fish is the most important protein in southern Thai cooking. We're here to meet Sompong Nun Wan, who's an islander that's lived here all of his life. And like many of the islanders, he's a local fisherman. Yeah, every morning at 6am, he gets up to go fishing in his traditional wooden boat. You know, for fish and for shellfish, to sell at the local market and also to eat. And today, he's invited us to go with him. Tell you what, mate, it's blowing up a hoolie. Yeah, Dave, I hope we've got our sea legs on. Right, I'm going to sit here. Crab fishing by G.R. Hardley. The fishermen here have preserved their traditional, small-scale, sustainable fishing practices. Here we go, Kingy. We're heading out to sea to inspect Bat's stationary gill nets. Now, these nets are a popular low-cost method of fishing, and they are simply weighted onto the ocean floor. Yeah. Whoa! Wow. Is that a swimmer crab? Yes. How long are the nets? How big are the nets? 100 metres more. All right. Wow. So the big wow. nets then. Got a long way to go before we got supper. Big style, don't you? Yes. Oh, here they're starting to come now. Oh, there we go, look. Him and his missus. You get a lot of value out of the crabs. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. And they're flaming tasty. Yeah. Well. How many crabs do they reckon to catch in one day? One day, one kilo, I have a kilo. About, you know, 40, 40 crabs. 40, 40 crabs? Yes. OK, I think it's time we went back inside. After just an hour at sea, we were in serious danger of needing to use those flimsy-looking life jackets. So, we head back to shore, with a few crabs and an invitation to join Bat and his family later on for dinner. As well as seafood, the other staple of southern Thai cuisine is the coconut, and many families grow their own in the back garden, just like we might grow apples. So, we've come to meet housewife Oi and her English-speaking friend Nock to find out more about this hairy little fruit. I'm not talking about Kingy. Very nice to meet you. Very Hello, nice Dave. Nice to meet you, Nock. Do you have enough coconuts to keep yourself Self-sufficient in coconuts, coconut milk. Bye, 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 bye. 
uh, about 20... 20 trees. 23. How many yeah. coconuts yeah. per tree? Yeah. About 50. About 50? Wow. 50. That's a lot of coconut, dude. Yeah, isn't it? Does... That's 1,000 coconuts a year. 1,000 coconuts a year. What does she use the coconuts for? Some chicky for for cooking, mm -hmm. and then some she sells. One family would struggle, I suspect, to get through a 1,000 coconuts a year. <laughs> now, coconut trees grow up to 80 foot high. So, I'll bet you're thinking, well, if that's the case, how did they get the coconuts down? Well, it's dead easy, you see. You hire an expert coconut picker. And here he comes now. I want to be like you. I wanna walk like you, talk like you, ooh ooh. You see, it's true. A little bit like me, good luck to me, you got to. Oh, he hires the monkey and his man two or three times a year to pick a coconuts, rather like us calling out the window cleaner. Let's go. Ah. I'm excited to see this. It's good. Come on. Ties use pigtail macaques to pick the coconuts. They have the only school in the world that teaches the monkeys how to do it. Incoming. Boom. So there we go. Incoming. An experienced Boom. monkey, you know, can chuck down up to 300 coconuts in a day, which is 10 times faster than a man could. They're trained to spot the right coconuts by smell. Does the monkey ever fall out the tree? Well, that would be a crap monkey then, though, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? They've got flaming knots. <laughs> Give us a shout, son, would you, when it's coming? Here's another one. It's a very useful tree, the coconut tree. Not only can you eat part of it, you can make roofing out of it, you can use it for houses, make... spoons. Ah, oh, it's across the way. And the water from the coconuts is good for you, too. It's very good for you. It's low in cholesterol, low in fat, 43 calories a cup, you know. Look oh, at that. Wow, that's gorgeous. Mm. Time to pay the worker. Cheap at the price, a sweet yoghurt drink. Oh, oh, get in, son. Thanks, monkey. Thank you. Oh dear, do you know what? Do you know how they use monkeys to pick the coconuts? Well, they need another one to scrape out the flesh. No, I can't say I've ever ridden a coconut device before. The flesh from inside the coconut is what I will use to make the coconut milk. And this is the traditional way to get the flesh. So what to do with a redundant cowboy's spur? Yeah. Oh. See, you could so easily take the skin off your thumbs doing this. And once the coconut's grated, you just add water to get the milk. So basically, you squeeze all the moisture out of the coconut into the water. Mm -hmm. Coconuts loaded with oil, most of which is saturated fats, which give the milk its thick colour and taste. The first pass of water is the richest. It's a bit like first pressed olive oil and yeah. second pressed oil, isn't it? Yeah, fascinating. You get your best off your first press. Yeah. That's your cream de la crop. By the time the water goes through a second time, much of the coconut fat has already gone, so the milk's much lighter. When we start make curry, we put this one for the... The and light then, one first yeah, and, and that. Yeah, and the cream one... In, in, in the yeah, end. Yeah, I understand. More so, coconut in this one. Ah, right. Yeah. In the, yeah. More cream. It's, you can, you can. it's a much more sophisticated use of coconut milk than we have yeah. at home. The thinner milk starts the cooking, and the richer milk is used to thicken the sauce off. It tastes yeah. fresh and green. Ooh, creamy. And creamy. That monkey has done his job well. He has. But you see, you know, people talk about food from sauce to table. You know, you don't get much more from sauce to table than that, do you? Just 5,000 people live here on Koh Yanoi. Although 90% of the Thai population at large is Buddhist, on this island, nearly everyone is Muslim. Yeah, and that's because they came here from the Malay Peninsula in the 1800s, and they brought their culture and cuisine with them. We're here during one of the most religious times of the Muslim year, Ramadan, when they fast during the day. In the evening, the Ramadan market opens up, 
selling food for the evening feast. Mm. Cup, come, come, cat. Oh, oh mate, absolutely amazing. Better not eat too much, Kingy. We've been invited to our friendly fisherman Bat's house Hello. for Ramadan meal, Hello, no. cooked by his wife Wa. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, down hey. the price is right. Hello, Knock. Hello. Knock's here to act as our interpreter again. Wa? Wa? Wa has been rustling up a feast and just has a couple of dishes left to cook. Now we start to make a. Yellow curry. Yellow curry. Yay! 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 Looking forward to that. First, Wa prepares the crabs we caught earlier. Oh, it's just the crabs. Yes, it's nice to see how they prepare a crab. Nice. Back off. Back off, yeah. It's just about our favourite food, this, isn't it? Then she begins her yellow curry sauce by warming some coconut milk. OK, for the coconut milk, what a great privilege this is. It is great. Thai home cooking again. again. Brilliant. So is this, is this the first coconut milk? No, this is second. That's the second this one. This is second. Yeah. Yeah. So we start off with that and then Yeah. And then that's this is the thicker one, the first. In the end. And we finish yeah. that. Look at that. Mm. Are you gonna put red curry paste in here now? Yes. Yes. Now. So in yeah. with the second coconut milk. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Mm. The spiced turmeric gives yellow curry paste That's its characteristic yeah. colour. Yeah. It came to Thailand on the spice route from India and is now the most yeah. widely used spice in southern Thai cooking. Doesn't matter what the crab tastes like, the gravy's yeah. going to be ace. Yes. <laughs> and of course, look at those lovely prawns. <sighs> those prawns are destined for a delicious red curry. Yeah. The paste's fiery colour and taste comes from copious amounts of red chilies. I wish you could smell the smells in this kitchen. It's yeah. unreal. The yellow curry and the fried red curry. The colours of the Thai sunshine. This is so exciting. It is, isn't it? The sun's going down. Everybody's really hungry. Yes, yeah, starving. Okay. So now. It's Is time that to... the call from the mosque? Yeah, from the mosque. So I take can hear. A seat, please. Oh, yes. thank you, thank you, thank you. So listen. Five times a day. The evening call to prayer tells us that it's time to break the fast. Wa and Bat haven't eaten since dawn, so they're more than ready for this feast. Enjoy your meal. Oh, thank you. Oh, stinky beans for me. Stinky beans, or sato as they're officially known, are another feature of Southern Thai cooking. They get their name from their strong flavour and the fact that they can have a, well, let's say, lingering effect. The red curry with these wonderful prawns and stinky beans is superb. Mm. Oh, I've just got a first, the first real reality of how hot, hot, hot the cuisine is in the cell. Really? I've just had the first reality how sweet a crab can taste. That yellow curry is fantastic. But you ask why well, she learned how to cook, because it's very good. There's a different equation. Some from her mom, but some, she said she read the book. Okay. It's the same for cooks the world over, isn't it? It is, yeah. Dave, yeah. Something we just just change because in the book, something they use pork. And then, yes. yeah, that's what we cannot eat. I'm going to watch myself with these stinky beans. I do love them, but I might have to live with myself later. <laughs> mm. Oh, me. Hey, I'm ready for my bed now. I don't know about you. Oh, I am. What, what a day. What a dear, what a privilege. Yeah. That's yeah. that that for me, that epitomized Thai hospitality and Thai people. Yeah, me too. You know, coconut is in everything here in southern Thailand. So in honor of this humble hairy ingredient, we're heading to the beach to cook a delicious Thai dessert. 
What the hell have you come as? We're meant to be funky kind of young things on the beach. You look like an organ grinder. Well, you know what you look like, don't you? No. The I, monkey. I've just come back from yoga. It's loose, it's comfortable, it enables me to get into the positions where hitherto I couldn't. Anyway, down to business. We're going to be cooking a coconut sticky rice salad, cos coconuts being the motif of these islands. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a lovely papaya and lime gorgeousness, cornucopia melody. One of the most popular desserts in southern Thailand is mango and coconut sticky rice pudding. But we found a lovely ripe papaya and decided to use that instead. And I think it'll work a treat. I think it will too. It's going to either work well in Phuket or in Peterborough. Indeed. Yes, I'd better get started. Sticky rice is a glutinous rice. It's basically a short grain rice that it tends to go mushy and you soak the rice in water for about four hours and it tends to go glutinous. Now, a lot of people say you should wash that rice before you do it, but the idea of sticky rice is it's sticky. So I think keep the starch in. When it's soaked, pop it in a steamer like this and just steam it for about half an hour. We've just made this lovely little woven mat of bamboo leaf as well. At home, you could use grease proof. Just leave that to steam until it looks like, well, a jellyfish that's been out in the sun. We want it sticky. Boing, boing, boing. And while the rice is cooking, prepare the papaya, or pawpaw, as it's also known. Next, add the zest of an unwaxed lime and squeeze in the juice. Ready to be served with Mr. Meyer's coconut sticky rice. Hi, thank you. And just when it was all going so well, the monsoon's kicking off. It's just gone dark. Liam and Nora. Me at Kingy! Oh, how's your rice? Right? <laughs> Me gas is blown out. <laughs> Hold on. We're cursed. First the boat, now the beach. The wind and rain are following us around. Not the exotic Thai experience we signed up for. <sighs> Fortunately, as quickly as they arrive, the clouds pass. And the sticky rice is done, so we can crack on. We need to do an infused coconut milk, and you kind of mix that with the sticky rice. It's a two-part cookery. So I've got coconut milk. Mmm. And you can use half-fat coconut milk if you're a porker. It is better for you. Some salt, some palm sugar, and five kaffir lime leaves. That's all you need. And it's like this wonderful taste of paradise. Let's get started, like your hob. Pour some coconut milk into a saucepan. Add a pinch of salt, some palm sugar, and kaffir lime leaves. You can get both of these at the bigger supermarkets and just keep stirring till the palm sugar's dissolved and it comes to a gentle simmer. Then leave to cool. I wonder if my rice is getting sticky. Yeah. Ah. What's going on with the dogs? Aren't they beautiful? It's like me and you, that, do you know what I mean? Hey, dude, that's it. Maybe it's been sent by the spirits of the island. Yeah, it's a Buddhist version of us. Freaky, dude. Freaky. <laughs> Once your rice is nice and sticky, it's time to pour in the coconut mixture. But keep a little back. Now we're going local and using little bamboo baskets lined with banana leaves as our bowls. Load them up and drizzle the remaining coconut milk over. And a little lime leaf finishes it all off nicely. And that's your coconut sticky rice pudding with papaya drizzled in lime juice. Sparks. Sparks. Pudding. Papaya. Look at that. It's unctuous, it's sticky. It's rice pudding. So you call a pants meal. <laughs> mm. Papaya mixed. Mm. That flavour combo goes together very well. You know, Kingy, I don't think I'll ever eat papaya without lime juice again. No. Genius. Mm. If you could put that in a chocolate bar, you'd make a fortune. So there you go, our version of Thai rice pudding. Comfort food, Thai style. 
Now you can see, can't you, how the cuisine's been shaped by what they have a lot of, namely coconuts. And by the people who migrated here hundreds of years ago. True. Now let's head north to see what culinary treasures are hidden there. 700 miles north, to be precise, where the climate is cooler and the landscape couldn't be more different. It's all mountains and jungles. And it has a very different multicultural heritage too. The north borders Laos and Myanmar, or Burma as it used to be known. Over the centuries, people from as far afield as China have made this area their home. I can't wait to see what the food's like up north, Kingy. Here we go, Kingy! The gates to the city of Chiang Mai. The ancient city and the gateway to it. Fantastic! Hey, hey. in the northern capital of Chiang Mai. It was once the ancient capital of the Lana Kingdom. Before Thailand as we know it even existed, the north was part of the mighty Lana Kingdom, which also extended into neighboring Laos, Burma and China. In the 15th century, the Lana Kingdom was powerful and prosperous, dominating trade routes between southern China and the Burmese seaports. By the 20th century, it no longer existed and Chiang Mai had become the northern capital of Thailand. But the Lanas left a legacy of food unique to the region. Chiang Mai is the fifth biggest city in the whole of Thailand and it's said to have some of the best food in the whole of Asia. So much so that Thais will make a pilgrimage north to explore the local markets and sample the Lana delicacies. And there's one animal that takes pride of place on the northerners' plates, and that's the, the pig. pig. In the south, there's not much pork due to the Muslim population. But here in the north, the Chinese influence means most people are Buddhist, and pork is one of the most popular meats. Oh, King Yilo, markets, our natural habitat. Love it! Get excited. The locals do their food shopping here, but also pop in at the end of the day for a post-work beer and a snack that's strangely familiar. It's a living, breathing mountain of pork crackling. It's like the blob, isn't it? You know, it's like seeing a 1950 sci-fi film. <laughs> I hear the sounds of crackling pork. Ooh, that is Valhalla for All us. All I need, <laughs> its fingers are a fork. It came, it saw it, took over Chiang Mai. The 40 kilo pork scratching. Pork scratchings are made from deep frying the skin of the pig, making little curls of bite-sized, crunchy, piggy gorgeousness. This is the first piece of Lana cuisine. Oh, hey, man, it's epic. Now, you in the black country who think you make the best pork scratchings in the world. I mean, to tell you, so you don't. You've got to come to Chiang Mai for your scratchings, you know. Yeah. Yeah, goodbye, Birmingham. Hello, Chiang Mai. These are epic. The love life. Oh, Boston. But there's more to this food than pork scratchings. We're meeting local food writer Anne to find out. What to you is Lana food? So Lana food, we don't use coconut in the food. Right. Yes, because up here we don't grow coconut here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the taste is uh, a little bit of bitterness, but not so much, mm -hmm. and uh, salty. Yes. All right. But no sweet. Oh, now, okay. um, what's this? This is Kang Hang Lei. So this one is the culture from uh, Burma. But yeah, it's, not, it's a little yeah. bit sour because of we put tamarind juice in here. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Right. Gang Hang Le, uh, we use like pork, uh, mm. like sirloin, like the, the yeah, side yes. of the pork with some of the ribs mixed together. Uh, many, many herbs and many spices. And then what's in here is, uh, what do you call We call it pickle, yeah? Pickle, yeah, yeah, pickle yeah, yeah. garlic, yeah. Pickle garlic. Pickle Ooh, garlic. Wow. And then um, ginger, mm -hmm. yeah, in here. And then some of the crushed uh, peanuts. Ooh. Mm. It's thought that Gang Hang Le originated with the Shan tribe, who arrived in Thailand from Burma in the late 19th century. Ooh, 
I speak English. So, and do you think that Lana food is the best in Thailand? Well, because I live here, I was born here, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard it said yes. that it could be some of the best in Asia. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Next, we're heading further north, into the mountains, towards the Burmese border. These roads are a biker's dream, but in days gone by, the Thais would have used a different vehicle. The elephant. Today, most of Thailand's 2,700 domesticated elephants find gainful employment in the tourism industry. They live in camps where they're cared for by their trainer or Mahout. And we just had to meet them, didn't we? But before we can swap two wheels for four legs, it's back to the classroom. Map Blong. Map Blong. Map Blong. Yeah, Map Blong is mean elephant body down there. Map Blong. Map Blong. Say who? Who? How? 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 How is mean stop. stop? It's like learning to drive, isn't it? Mat Blanc. Mat Blanc. Mat Blanc. Mat Blanc. It's impressive to see man's mastery over beasts, isn't it? Mat Blanc. OK, so I grab it here first. Grab it here. These animals are so graceful. It feels like you're riding something so old and so part of the planet that we all live on. It's a very spectacular feeling. Here, Kingy, yeah. you can tell the elephants are Thai because they're snacking all the time, <laughs> aren't they? Yes, yeah, they are. <laughs> One minute bamboo, next minute a bit of sugar cane. It's like elephant street food. Now it's time for our lunch, Mahout style. Oh. We've got a treat. We've got Pad Thai, which is something we know we're familiar with in Britain. This is real Pad Thai, chicken kebabs and sticky rice, all cooked over a fire. I mean, you don't get that shine at Richard Services, do you, up the M6? No. no. Kingy, I love the way you do the sticky rice. Get bamboo, pour your rice in like loading a muzzle-loaded shotgun. Water. Water from mineral water. Plug it up with a bit of banana leaf, leave it to steam. And it's going to stay sticky, isn't it, because of the bamboo? Oh, here we go, look. Yeah. Oh. OK, you want to try? Yeah. Yes, please. Oh, wow! Now that's sticky. Yeah. Sticky, compressed. Look, that's it in its entirety. Oh. Is it amazing? Yeah, that is amazing. Look, fantastic. That's the stickiest sticky rice I've ever stucked. Mmm. See the jungle? It even gives you a tablecloth, something to sit on, some plates, bamboo skewers, bamboo steamers. Whoa. We've got the lot. Look at this, man. God. Look at that. Now that's Pad Thai. Whoa! Did you know, Mr King, Pad Thai was invented because rice was in short supply after World War II. So the Thai government ran a competition to find the best noodle dish. Look at this. Oh, by God, that's good. That's good. Do you know what? I often think, you know, like, on telly in England, and you've got, like, Ray Mears or Bear Grylls and out in the jungle yeah. and yeah. drinking your own droppings, you know. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way, you know. This is jungle fair, natural style, Thai style. So Bear Grylls, okay. forget where you go. You obviously need to change, change your travel agent, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, guys, is there, for the Mahout, mm. a tradition of cooking in bamboo? Yeah, because sometimes in the forest we have to cook and we don't have nothing, no oil, no nothing. Right. Only bamboo water we can look in for the forest, and sometimes we can find some chicken or yeah. animal in the forest. Just barbecue, we don't have pan, no oil, yeah. only right. barbecue. In Thailand, what is the tradition of mahouts? I mean, how do you become a mahout? Our elephant come from generation from grandfather, yeah. grandmother yeah. to yeah. us, and some of them they love to ride the elephant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they love animal, they want to ride the elephant. Mm -hmm. It's cold when you see the elephant, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very cold. After a nice ramble in the jungle, there's nothing the elephants like better than a nice cool bath and a bit of Thai pop music.
I can tell you what, it could certainly do with um, some exfoliation. <laughs> You're going to have to leave your elephant behind, Kingy, because our road trip's not quite finished yet. From your western lands, travel towards eastern sands. We've been invited to meet a hill tribe. Mate, is that one of the hill tribes that migrated into northern Thailand over the last three centuries from countries like Burma, Tibet and China? Yes, and their village is so remote, the food hasn't changed for centuries. I'll tell you what, this looks inviting, Dave. The waters of the mountain ranges of Doi Luang Changgao. Oh, I'm going to have a sloosh. Yeah. That was amazing. And look, that's an example of Hill Tribes people's bamboo plumbing. Because the villages are set up in the mountains where there's a waterfall and are well known for constructing bamboo plumbing and guttering so we've got water on tap in the villages. Look at that side. Now we know we're in the mountains. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at it. It's all a bit hard it's to see. Clark, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit, yeah. Well, yeah. The Lost World. Oh, it's fabulous. Hey, just superb. It's always lovely to get out of the city and the hustle and bustle of the city and yeah. come to the peace of a country because I, I kind of think that the true heart of the country and all its cultural emotion comes from the rural areas. There are six main hill tribes in northern Thailand scattered over three and a half thousand oh, villages. Man, look at that. Yeah. We're meeting the Lisu tribe. They migrated from Tibet nearly 200 years ago. Most of them settled in Burma but about 28,000 came to Thailand, some settling here in the spectacular Chai Thang Dao mountain range. And since then, their way of life has remained almost unchanged. Hello. The Lisu merely survive off the land or earn money working for local farmers. About 30 families live here in houses made from bamboo. We're meeting Sam and his family along with a family friend, Del. Sam? Sam? Hello! Hello! Hello, Hello, Hello Sam. Sam. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello, Hello Sam. Sam. Dave. Dave. Del? Del. Hello, Del. Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> All right, man, how are you? Your name, Del, is it short for something in Thai? My, my Thai name's Derek. That's when was man. Derek a Thai name? I'm Del boy. <laughs> yeah. So from only foods and horses. Del boy they say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Monge> too. <laughs> well, should we get trekking? Just like their ancestors, Sam and his family forage for food in the forest. Meat is scarce here, but as the north is so fertile, there's an abundance of veg plus leaves, shoots and plants for flavour. Oh, that's called awa kwa kwa su. Can be made the chilli paste. This is the right. same family as aubergine. We call peel aubergines. Peel aubergine. Yeah, like little yeah. peas. Oh, yes. Yeah. Also, when should you smash it and they yeah. can be stir fry? i tell you what, Sai. This makes a difference <laughs> to going brabbling with your mum. <laughs> so does everybody live from the land here? They live on cultivation, what they grow. Yeah. They grow ginger, mm. peanut, corn, mm. and rice. And what they can't grow, they get from a weekly market an hour's journey away. Rice is the staple diet for the hill tribes. The ground needs to be flooded for the rice to grow, but in the north, where the land's so steep, the water simply runs off. So they have to wait for the rainy season to plant it. And then they head out with an unfeasibly large stick. I can see the purpose of bamboo pole. Yeah, I was digging it in, it's pinging the soil out. Yeah. The length of the pole makes it vibrate and flick the soil out. It's genius. Just it out yeah. without the minimum of effort, so you're not having to dig it, you know, you're just because the gradient's pretty steep, isn't it? His wife pops the rice seed in. But it must be such a hard life farming on this gradient. Yeah, it's a hard, but for them, they, they're used to it. Is there any problem with young people wanting to leave the village? 
Mm -hmm. Are they attracted to go to Chiang Mai and to Bangkok? The, the young generation that goes to study. Yeah. And then once they graduate, they may not come back. So do you think there's a danger that the traditional ways of the hill people could die out? Yes, that's dangerous yeah. for the, the way of Lisu life and yes. culture. Yeah, I mean, God forbid these lands became a tourist resort or a golf course, you know? Oh, no, quite, yeah. These jungles have helped shape northern Thai cuisine, and in the days when it took people weeks to trek through the forests, they gather roots and herbs to use as a substitute for their normal curry ingredients. And thus, one of Thailand's most delicious curries was born, Kiang Pa, or jungle curry, as we know it at home. There's a rumble in the jungle. Yes. It's our Thai jungle curry, you know. And if you're going to cook a jungle curry... Where do you come to? The jungle! Look at that. This Thank is a you. great recipe. And you know one crucial ingredient that you need while making a jungle curry? You need... This. Kachai. You might find it in the UK labelled up as rhizome root, because that's what the Chinese people call it. But it's lovely. It's like a little mixture between lemongrass, ginger and a bit of galangal thrown in. It's mild, it's lovely, and that's what gives its jungle curry its distinctive character. Well, that and loads of green chilies, green peppercorns, and it blows your head off. <laughs> right, now, first thing we have to do is to make the curry paste. What do you need for a curry paste? Do you need a pestle and you need a mortar? I am here to be pestle and mortar and operator thereof. Yes. First thing, chop six Thai shallots, or two British ones, and chuck him in the mortar. Turn Jordy on. <coughs> and watch him go. Oh, uh, you're all gone. What? I've got a problem on here. <laughs> this veranda's not right. really <laughs> secure. It's, it's not. I'm going to have to get a chair. <laughs> Is that your bonking chair? I've got it. Oh, yeah. That's it, you see? Right. Now, this has just killed the cameraman. I know, but then mind you. It's all right. We have enough. three cloves of garlic. You could, of course, use this in a food processor, but this <laughs> Fantastically more entertaining, isn't it? Pop the garlic into the mortar, along with some galangal, which is similar to ginger but slightly stronger. And then grab some lemongrass. I kid you not, we found a tarantula before. It was a Thai tarantula, and apparently Thai tarantulas are more aggressive than your average tarantula. And actually, the bite from them is a little bit more than a sting. It would immobilise you for 24 hours. But the thing about a jungle curry is, it originally was made with wild boar, because obviously up here in the hills, it was wild boar time. But it's more commonly done now with pork or chicken. But actually, there's so much flavour in it, you could get away with a vegetarian jungle curry. Add your chopped lemongrass to the mortar and some hot green chilies. Chop them roughly and pass to Geordie. Stop! And green chilies. Then add in some kaffir lime leaves and some coriander Dan. roots. Dan! Dan! Sit there. I'm going for a swim. <laughs> well, right, it's me and my old mate, Del Boy. We're going to get on with the curry. Half a teaspoon of shrimp paste. Stop! Thank you. One teaspoon of cracked white peppercorns. And that's it. All we have to do now is wait until Dell has reduced that to a paste, and that will be our curry paste. Thank you. While Dell knuckles down to business, our Lisu hosts are preparing the other food for tonight's dinner. This will be accompanied by the obligatory Thai chilli paste, which Elena and her friend Witcher are preparing. Elena? Ah! Hello. Hi, how Hello, are you? Hello, Emma. Hi, Witcher. Hi, Witcher. Hi, um, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, um, this is the her very lovely special roasted chili paste. That's basically Thai garlic. Yeah, yeah. And small chilies. Yeah. And then uh, salt. And you were telling us that there's a lot more spices and a lot more herbs in the north than the central belt of Thailand. Yeah, I think it's uh, because of the availability. Basically, yeah. we are. Uh, we have so many uh, areas that are still quite uh, foresty, yeah. so you have a lot of herbs from the forest. If you don't have it, you go to your neighbors. Done. <laughs> yeah, Done. Jim. Jim. Taste. Oh, hey, okay, Dave. Yes. So, it's a seasoning, basically, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you can just to add on. 
on that mm into your meal. That would give it mm to anything, wouldn't it? Oh, I mean, you could season a beer mat with that and enjoy it. You could. Right. Thank well, let's, you, Emma. Thank you. Dish up. Ah, Here um, we go. Thank you. Thank you. That's another recipe. Thanks. I've just seen the future. It's tie shaped. Oh, I'm loving it, dude. I'm loving it. Now, how's Del getting on with our jungle curry paste? There's normally that. Del's got lovely action. Shut your face. Thanks Look at you. that. Ooh, oh, no, that is good. Del, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very Del's pounded our jungle curry paste to a pulp. Perfect. So it's time to light the wok. Now, here's a little tip. Lift the pan off the ring before you light it. <laughs> Told you. Now, fry off all that paste for a few minutes. But these little pea aubergines are fantastic. They're kind of like a bit of pea. They're not like an aubergine, but they give the most amazing texture. And again, with Thai food, it's the texture. You can get pea aubergines in jars at the big supermarkets, but if you want them fresh, you need to head to the Asian shops. The main thing about the jungle curry is it's in the north. It's not cream or coconut based. It's water based. But sometimes in our job, you feel quite cool. And cooking jungle curry in the jungle is one of them. My legs are full of fluid, they're swelling up with water retention, but I'm a bothered, I'm a heck. Now, take a lump of Chiang Mai's finest, a fillet of pork, cut it into medallions, and then add to the pan, just to seal the pork. And now for the heat. And let's cut the chilies Thai style. It's kind of shardy chunks like that, seeds and all. Once the pork's sealed, add in the aubergines, chilies, some chicken stock, some Thai fish sauce, and let it all simmer. Remember we said there was a tarantula on here? We've got him. Have a look. There it is. Look at that. Now, you don't get that at Television Centre lurking in your kitchen. I'm not letting him go, though, till we finish cooking. <laughs> I'm not good with spiders. Right, we're boiling. Don't even think about it. Now it's time for the second wave. Toss in some chopped kaffir lime leaves, diced squash, some wonderful cracked chai, green peppercorns, palm sugar, and finally some long beans and sweet basil. Phew! That's it, Kingy, it's done. Perfume's fantastic. Oh, I mean, the basil has really lifted it at the end, but by cracky, there's a lot going on in there. Time to see if our jungle curry lives up to Lissu's standards. You're dead to me. She says she wants to taste now. Great. <laughs> great. Yes, go on. Yes, go on. Go after on. you. Please, after you. Ladies first. Oi, mm. She said the, the pork is very big. Yeah. Pork's too big. Mm. What do you think? Lava. Wow. Yeah, delicious. And right. uh, spicy. She likes it. Get in. Oh, it's good. It's a real good old-fashioned Friday night curry. Would you? What would you think of as a jungle curry? Is this pretty close, or...? What is it here? I think the flavour is really mm -hmm. quite nice, you know. Um, but there's many different styles of doing a jungle curry in Thailand. But right. this is perfect with sticky rice like this. I, I loved it. <laughs> she wanted to eat them all now. Oh, so <laughs> That's the best compliment you could give us. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Tell you what, Sai. Si. Soon we'll have a party. Yeah. Great dancing shoes. I have. And Sam's lent us a couple of pairs of the traditional Lisu baggy trousers to wear for dinner. I kind of sit like that. Ooh, okay. <laughs> wow, he's the food. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, this is super. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. So, what yeah. have we got? There's, well, there's ours. There's a veggie they grow yeah. themselves. Pork is the main meat here. There's a minced pork with spicy. Oh, lovely. Oh, great. This one, chili. This is the one we pick. Little yes. aubergines, yeah. yeah. A little aubergine. And the chili. Long that. bean. And soya bean. Oh, wow. Wow. Do you cook Sam or does your wife cook this? This is Sam cook. Right. This is Sam's wife. Sam's oh, wife. Fantastic. Brilliant, thank you. What a team effort. Excellent. Well, feast, Excellent. thank you. What a Excellent. fantastic feast, mm. thank you. No chili, no yummy. <laughs> yeah, no chili, no <laughs> yummy. Yeah. What's interesting, there's, there's just enough chili. Yeah, it's not, it's, over, it's yeah. not overly hot. I mean, we came looking for authentic food. It's very, very honest food, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm. Sam, has the food that you eat changed much during the course of your life? Uh, mm. 
Mm-hmm. It's like the same as in a back to the fifth generation, like our grandfather, great grandfather. Yeah. Do you think one of the stars of this meal though is the rice? Mm-hmm. You know, to eat with somebody who's grown their own rice on a hillside. Yeah. In Northern Thai yeah. special, it's really tasty. Right, it is dead right. Mm-hmm. What's wonderful about the dishes, the ingredients that they're made with are so good and fresh. so fresh. Yeah. Mm. There is yeah. just this fabulous just... flavour. And once dinner's over. Sam's happy to show us how they celebrate a special occasion, which for us, this is. Sam's the village musician and makes all his own instruments. What a wonderful end to a wonderful day, Sai. How marvellous is this? What lucky men. You know, Dave, I don't think I've ever met such a welcoming people as the Thais, and their food is a reflection of that. For centuries, they've embraced the flavours and spices that outsiders have brought in. What I've discovered, mate, is just how much more delicious Thai food we've yet to experience back home. Now, there's something to look forward to. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Oh, Sam, that was fantastic. Fantastic.